Oh, hello. My name is Goodness. Oh, hello. Welcome to um, Complete Christian Channel, YouTube channel. My name is Goodness. I'm Chidi's wife, for those who don't know me. And welcome to the, today's program. Okay. Hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Complete Christian. Hello. Yeah, this time I'm not going to remember the, the introduction. Okay. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the Complete Christian Channel. Um, do you want me to say my name? I'm sure you know my name, but I'll just say it again. Goodness, Chidi's wife. <laughs> Christian channel and um, for those who don't know me my name is goodness in Kumere. I'm Chidi's wife I like to say that here yeah. so today we'll be talking about um, doing a video about evangelism um, and I'm here today just because a lot of people just like me we're Christians um, we're Christians who believe in our Christian faith who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ but we're not really confident or don't know how to go about you know passing the message across like preaching the gospel properly like the fundamentals on how to really tell people about christ so today chibi here will be teaching me because he goes out for evangelism he does all the street evangelism talks to people but i don't really know how to you know go out for evangelism and talk i talk to people i rather talk to people personally but not like going out on the streets and talking because i won't even know what to say really Sorry, I know some people are like me as well out there, so that's why we're doing this video. Chidi is going to be teaching me because I want to join him as well to go on the street and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and say the right words so that when people come up to me to ask me questions or challenge me, I know the right things to say. Because growing up, we were not like, I wasn't really taught evangelism. We were just told, go and, sh you know, give your life to Christ, give your life to Jesus, you know. We don't really have that, you know, for foundation, that concrete thing to say to people that's solid, not it's going to make you rich, it's going to give you a car, it's going to that's that's really not what Jesus wants us to talk about, really. Mm. But this is what a lot of people say, it's going to heal your disease, it's going to buy you give you a car, it's going to prosper you. That's not what the gospel is all about. So today Chidi here is going to teach me. The fundamentals of evangelism and i'm sure a lot of people will be learning while we are watching together join us and keep watching mm. that's yeah. a good intro <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um welcome everyone um and welcome to thank my you. special guest thank you um so yes yeah, it's really important that you know we know how to share the gospel if if we believe in christ and we believe that you know we are saved um, we know what we are saved from yeah. and because we love other people as well we want them to be saved the same way we are saved I mean it's like if you know someone is going to burn in a, in a, in a burning house because you love them you wouldn't just walk away and just carry on mm -hmm. going you know, and sell let them sort themselves out so really evangelism should be born out of love you know because god loves us and he saved us from you know perishing so because we've gotten that love from god we want to share that love with other people so that they too will be saved so that should be the starting point so when we talk about um, evangelism the, the place that we should look at to give us an, an idea of how evangelism should be done is Matthew chapter 19 and reading from 16 to 26 mm -hmm. so that's where um, a, 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 a man a rich man came to Christ to say um, you know how can I inherit eternal life right so maybe we should read that you know uh, passage of scripture that will help us understand what's going on there that will help you when you're speaking to someone about Christ 
But this is what it says. So from verse 16, so I'm reading Matthew chapter 19 from verse 16 to 26. And I'm, I'm reading from the easy to read version um, of the Bible. So it says, a man came to Jesus and asked, teacher, what good thing must I do to have eternal life? 17. Jesus answered, why do you ask me about what is good? Only God is good. But if you want to have eternal life, obey the Lord, the, the, law, the Lord's commandments. So let's just stop there. So that first part, if I ask you, why do you think um, Jesus has said in other scriptures, uh, other, other translations, you say, um, why do you call me good? Only God is good, right? Mm -hmm. Why do you think Jesus asks that question? Because everybody is, nobody is good really. Yeah. And everybody has got one thing or the other, isn't it? One sin or the other, they, they're not, nobody's perfect basically. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's a good answer. So basically, when you're preaching the gospel, you're supposed to show God's holiness first. You understand? So, the gospel means good news. So, before someone appreciates the good news, they need to understand the, the situation they're in and know how bad it is. It's like if, you're, if you have um, a sickness and you go to a doctor and the doctor says, you just say, oh, you're fine, you're right, you know. You won't, when they give you medication, you will not take it, take it seriously because you don't know that you're dying, you have like terminal illness because they need to explain. So that's basically what we're doing when we're preaching the gospel. We're actually showing them how, um, you know, the Bible says that it is, it is a fearful thing to fall, in, fall into the hands of the Almighty God. So you're telling them that they're in danger, you understand, yeah. and, and God is going to judge their sins. When they understand that, then they would ask for the remedy. They would ask for remedy. They would be ready to accept your medication. Mm -hmm. You understand? So that's basically what it is. So and then it says, only God is good. But if you want eternal life, obey the laws, commandments. So you obey the the, the, the ten commandments, right? Mm -hmm. So now this is what eighteen says. Eighteen says, the man asked, which ones? Right. Mm -hmm. So Jesus now listed all the ten commandments and he said jesus answered you must not murder anyone you must not commit commit adultery you must not steal you must not tell lies you must respect your father and mother you must love your neighbor the same way you love yourself 20 the young man said i have obeyed all these commandments what else do i need to do right so if you see what, what happened there? Jesus listed all the Ten Commandments, right? Yeah. So this is what we do as well when we go on evangelism, when we preach. Or, because don't forget as well, it's not just preaching in, in the street. It can, it can be like having um, a conversational uh, you know, evangelism. You know, it doesn't always have to be. I've used that at work as well to speak to my manager, speak to different people. It's just having a chat. So the same conversation you can have having you know having a chat with your friend or whoever you met somewhere is the same thing you're translating when you're speaking on, on stage you know to a group of people in, in the street so if you see that the jesus listed the ten commandments so this is this should be our next step you show how holy god is and show how unrighteous you are right or human beings are then you show God's rules, right, and God's standard by listing the Ten Commandments. So the Ten Commandments, another way we look at it is call it the, the, the moral laws of God. Yeah. That's the standard God wants us to live, live to, you know, um, so they can see whether they've broken it. You understand? Yeah. So the Bible says that um, we've, we've all men have seen and fallen short mm -hmm. of the glory mm -hmm. of God. So what that means is we're falling short of God's standard. God has a standard and we have not met that standard, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you ask them if they've lied, if they've stolen, if they've, you know, disrespected their parents, 
you know, all these things are breaking God's rules. So when you sort of like bring all these things to their attention, so even if they thought they were all, because if you ask anyone, are you, are you a good person? They'll say, yeah, 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 I'm good. The reason why they're saying they are good is because they're judging themselves, um, comparing themselves with someone else whose sins in their eyes is bigger. They're not judging themselves based on the standard of God. So you're presenting the standard of God before them and say, let's compare yourself. You said you're good. Let's compare yourself to the standard of God. Do you meet up? Now, obviously, when, when they compare themselves, if they are truthful, they will know that they don't meet up. You understand? Yeah. And that's when Christ now said in, um, uh, in 21, if you want to be perfect, then go and sell all that you own. Give the money to the poor and you will have riches in heaven. Then come and follow me. Right? Yep. But when the rich, when the, the young man heard Jesus tell him to go and go away, uh, uh, give away his money, he was sad and did not want to do this because he was very rich. So he left. You understand? Yep. So this part is basically telling the person to forget you know um, earning eternal life by your own strength and shift your focus from what you can do yourself what you what you feel you are and put your trust in christ because christ says sell all these things and follow me you see but christ said that we should um you know we should uh, pick up our cross and follow him so all the riches of the world, all the you know, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and all this, all these things that makes us want to commit sin or take our attention towards something else that is not God. Basically, God, Christ is saying, leave all those things and follow me. Yeah. And obviously, what was the will of Christ? What will of God is for us to turn away from our sins. And put our um, repent, become sorry, put our trust in Christ, and obey Him. Christ says, "If you love me, you obey my commandments." So that's basically uh, an outline from the Bible on how to evangelize. What do you need to do to evangelize? So that's basically the outline. So do you have any question? Um, not really. Okay. Practically, how does that work? So if you're um, having a conversation, let's use a conversational evangelism as an example. So um, if you met someone um, or you met your, met your friend, how would you, if I may ask you, how would you start a conversation, you know, to share the gospel? I don't know. Hmm. I mean, a lot of times, I mean, you meet people, you know they go to church, they are Christians, they go to church, but somehow you could tell they're not, they're not Christ-like. Mm. But then, how do you convince them and tell them, look, you don't want to sound judgmental. I mean, I'm not righteous. I'm not, I have my own fault myself. Mm. But how are you supposed to be pointing out things to people without them feeling like you're judging them? Okay. That's the problem. I don't know. I'll, I'll rather just say, you know, I'll, you know, I'll just leave her. Yeah. Even though I know she's, you know, this person is not right. Yeah. Anyway, so the this is my approach. Yeah. If you want to share the gospel to, to anyone, don't assume that they are Christians, whether they go to church or not. You understand? Mm -hmm. Don't assume the person is a Christian. Because the Bible says that the people that followed Christ when he was preaching and doing anything, it, it, the Bible called them a mixed multitude. So there were people who were with Christ, following Christ sincerely, and there were people who were there for maybe the signs and wonders or for the entertainment. Prosperity. All that stuff. So the, their heart is not there. The Bible says they draw nigh with their lips. To me, with, with their lips, but their heart is far away from them. So there are people like that. Um, a lot of times as well is because of the teachings a lot of the gospel is not preached a lot in in churches so people come to church as a social gathering 
and they don't actually they don't get to hear the gospel. So don't assume that because the person goes to church, they are born again. They're not. The Bible says many will say, Lord, Lord. Not all those who say, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. So, so don't assume, basically. So this is, you can start, um, I, was in, I was in a laundrette um, sometime this year, maybe early this year or last year. And this is how I, I started um, having a, a conversational evangelism with someone. I was just talking to her, um, saying, oh, hello, how are you? And just having a chat. And, you know, I said, oh, you know, do you come to this laundrette a lot? And she said, no, oh, I come to this laundrette a lot. And blah, blah, blah. I said, do you go to church? And that was all I said. So basically, there, there's, a, there's loads of different ways to draw, to take a conversation to where you want it to go to. It just to have that sort of like, you know, um, icebreaker. Once you have that icebreaker, you can move it to anywhere. So I just said, do you go to church? She said, yeah, I go to CPC in you know, Gravesend, blah, 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 blah. I said, wow, you know. So then I asked her a question. So I said, are you a Christian? Mm. She said, yes. Then I said, are you born again? She said, no, I don't think so. You know, then obviously I just said, do you want me to explain to you what it means to be a Christian? Because both of them are the same. And if you're not born again, then you're not a Christian. Do you want me to explain it to you? And that was it. That was how I started doing my gospel presentation. And I explained to her that, look, you know, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And, you know, the wages of sin is death. And obviously that means we're going to go to hell. But, you know, because God is, you know, holy, he can't ignore sin, so he has to judge sin at some point. You understand? So that means both you and me, we are all destined to go to hell. But because God is rich in mercy, he doesn't want us to go to hell. He has to devise a way so that he can give the full judgment and also be merciful at the same time. And that we can't pay for the sin, so he had to come himself um, into this world as a human being, live a, a sinless life, and that's the person we call Jesus. And he died on the cross for your sin. So all you need to do, your sin is paid for, all you need to do is repent, which is have a change of mind towards sin, which is don't look at sin as all, oh, you know, it doesn't really matter. Everyone's doing it, you know, come on man, everyone's doing it, you know. Have a change of mind to say, I am sinning against God, the Almighty God. And he is holy and he's going to judge my sins. Yeah. Right? That's the change of mind. And become sorry for all the sins you've, you've committed against God. Because sometimes we think sin is just against somebody. No, it's against God. Whatever you do to someone else, you're doing it against God. So you become sorry and say to God, really, I'm really sorry for all these things. I, you know, thought sin was just something easy or just something small. But please, really, I'm sorry. Forgive my sins. Yeah. And then put your trust in Christ for your salvation. Yeah. Have faith in Christ for your salvation. And the Bible promises that your sins will be forgiven. And you're made right with God. So you, that person is saved from hell. He's going to hell. He or she is going to hell. And then um, the Bible says, uh, you know, you get everla everlasting life as a free gift just because Christ died on the cross for you and you've accepted his payment on the cross. So basically that's um, um, how to evangelize, doing a you know, Conversation. conversational um, evangelism. You can, the same way, the same thing, you can translate it, you know, to when you're going preaching on, on the street. You know, it's, it's the same concept. It's gospel, it's the gospel anywhere, anytime. It's just the same, you know, so it, doesn't really matter, you understand? You can have different styles of, of delivering it, but that's the main thing that we must, must be talking about. Talking about the holiness of God, talking about sin yeah. and the punishment of sin. Yeah. And then you present the gospel, which is the good news that Christ has died on the cross for our sins. And then all you need to do is to repent, 
repent, become sorry and ask for forgiveness. Turn away from the sins. Don't be a hypocrite and say, just be doing whatever you're doing and say, I'm a, you know, I'm a Christian. Turn away from them and then put your trust on Christ for your salvation. And God promises that he's going to forgive your sins and he will forget it. He says, like the east is to the west, he's going to forget your sins. He's not going to remember them anymore. Because when he sees you, yeah. he sees Christ. Because you get the righteousness of Christ. Yeah. You understand? So that's um, that's basically how to do um, um, a conversational evangelism. Yeah. Do you think you'll be able to do it? <laughs> you um, what I'll do is, I'll listen to the video again. Mm -hmm. So just like you've been to a lecture, you know, like attended a lecture, you probably have a, another go, listen to it again, mm -hmm. and then obviously, I'll give it a go. Fingers crossed. Yeah. So, yeah, I can give you like another example, which is um, an example from um, Ray Ray Comfort. is a is a very you know popular evangelist. Um, he uses the he got his um, format from. The, this place, the, this um, passage we just read. Yeah. So when he wants to start his evangelism, what he does, he says, he will probably say, "What is your? What do you believe about the afterlife?" Yeah. That's what he asks people, and then people, the person might say, "Uh, you know, that's where people go when they die. The good people go to heaven, and the bad people maybe go to hell." Then he would ask them, "Are you going to heaven? Are you a good person?" So he's incorporating what um, Christ, you know, the discussion with Christ and the rich yeah, man. Yeah. So he said, are you a good person? Are you going to heaven? Most people will say, yes. Yeah. Mm. Then he will say, okay, can I, can we do a test to see if you're a good person? Then he goes through what he calls the good person test, which is he takes some of the um, uh, Ten Commandments, some mm. of the commandments there and asks the person the question. He said, how many lies have you told in your life? And the person will say, uh, I'm countable, I yeah. you know, I can't really count. Then he'll put it back to them. What do you call someone who lies? You know, and then the person will be like, a liar. And then he'll say, so what are you? And the person will say, a liar. So it makes the person think because sometimes it's easy to judge other people we can't find it hard to judge, to judge ourselves yeah. you understand so then you ask them um have you hated anyone have you um looked at anyone with lust you know because the bible says we should not commit adultery but jesus then said if you look at anybody with lust you've committed adultery with that person in your heart yeah so he said have you looked at anyone with lust well, the guys will be like, well, I'm, I'm a man, like, you know, we do this every day, so, you know, I have blood running here, so, you know, hey, I, I do this every day. Then he'll be like, so what does that make you? I say, well, adulterer, because he's explains to them that means you're an adulterer in your heart, That's isn't it? Yeah. And then he'll go to, you know, obey your parents, you know, and all that stuff. And also, like, have you used the name of God in vain, you know? Like sometimes when people want to swear, they instead of using you know the F word, they will use the name of Jesus in place of it. And he would kind of bring it to their knowledge that that is blasphemy. You're mm -hmm. using you're disrespecting God by using his name like that. So when he brings all these things, he now asks them, if God judges you by the Ten Commandments, we just looked at even like looked at four or five, are you going to be innocent or guilty? If they're honest, they're going to say, I'll be guilty. Then he will say, Are you going if that if you're guilty, you're going to go to heaven or hell? Then the person will be like, probably hell. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. Probably hell. So it's like you're showing them. So sometimes it's not like we don't know. It's just that we haven't taken time. We are so busy with our lives, we haven't actually taken time to think about these things properly. You understand and maybe like growing going on going to school all the things they've been teaching you in school you haven't really had time to think mm -hmm. you know about these things so when the person says okay probably hell then you will not ask them so what can you do to go to heaven yeah 
So most people don't know. That's when you now present the gospel and tell them that Jesus died two thousand years ago. Mm. He left a you know lived a, a holy life, a righteous life, sinless life, died on the cross for our sins. Mm. Um, so when he died, he said it is finished. That means the payment for our sins has been made. Yeah. So all now, all we need to do is repent mm. and say to God, "I'm really sorry." Turn away from your sins and accept. Uh, I wouldn't say accept Jesus and put your faith in Christ for your salvation. You understand? Yeah. And that's what makes you a Christian. You become born again. You know, Christ, you know, God gives you a new heart, changes your heart. You start loving what is good and you start having the fruits of the Spirit from there onwards. You know. So that's um that's um that's a basically a, a simple tutorial. You know, on on how to share the gospel. I mean, maybe I'll just give one more example. Okay. Yeah. What <laughs> should you do now? <laughs> what should you do now? So we can digest the one we've learned already. All right. Okay. So um, yeah, that's the that's the um, the tutorial. Yeah. So hopefully next time you'll be with me on the on the harvest field. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you will see her in action. Share the gospel. Maybe you have even heard the mic and, and preach to everyone. You know. No more. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Yo, you go to no more. We have to say it properly. It's yeah. Proper. Yeah. People need to know why. You know, if you don't give your life to Christ, you go to hell and stuff. But why do I have to give my life to Jesus Christ? Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. So um. So next time maybe um. We'll um, maybe look at objections yeah. to the gospel. You understand, like what questions you might actually get when you're out there preaching. Yeah. People might have questions about pain and suffering. So if there's a God, why do people suffer? Yeah. And different other philosophical, uh, you know, reasons why people don't want to become Christians. Yeah. You understand? Well, this is a. Uh, I think this this is good. At least a good I start. So, yeah. You know to. Um, to start yeah thank you very much people thank you everyone for watching us i hope you've learned one or two like me i've learned i've picked up something at least and i would imagine you have as well thank you very much join us next time in our next tutorial on on how to face objections and how to tackle them as well thank yeah. you so thank you very much everyone i think this is my my turn now. Yeah. This is my video. You're a guest. Yeah, I know. So that. I'll do the wrap up. <laughs> so that's the video. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching, and thank you, my wife, for coming on the show. Yeah. Hope to see you next time. <laughs> so that's the video. So if you're not born again or if you don't understand Christianity, I'm going to leave a video below in the description box. It's called the Gospel Explained. So that will explain the gospel. What we just talked about. Explain it in detail. So you understand that um, so please watch that video and get right with god um if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do that now i like, do that now 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 please. Now, 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 now please and share this video a lot of people need, really need to know this so that yeah. they can actually learn and know how to share the gospel and someone who is not even born again might actually benefit from this because they will understand the gospel why they need to listen to the gospel and, and believe in christ so like i always say you know before i close my channel Fear God, God and keep his commandments for that is the whole duty of man. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you. We will see you in the next video. Yeah, God bless. God bless you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Done. Done. Let's see. Pray. That's for the camera. I don't know. God help us to say the right things. I let like this video reach people and give us more. Okay. Hello. Hmm? Hello. It's quite far, isn't it? Hello, my name is Goodness. Welcome to Complete Christian Channel. Um, Chidi's wife. That's the only case for the question, but we know. We know, thank you, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, hello. Welcome to Complete Christian Channel. My name is Goodness. 
For yeah. people who don't know me, I'm Chidi's wife. Alright, you're welcome to the channel. <laughs> <laughs> Have you? Yeah, okay, so next thing. So we're gonna watch and see, man. Okay.